I hate to tell you this, but some people absolutely like for you to be a more masculine woman. And I'll tell you the reason why. But first, like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. There are three types of people who would prefer you to be or stay as a masculine woman. Number one, a feminine man. When you are in a relationship with a feminine man, he absolutely prefers you to be in that masculine way of being. There's been a lot of videos going around um, social media saying that men absolutely love mean women. And in a way, men do love mean women, but there's a certain type of man that loves a mean woman. A feminine man absolutely loves and adores a mean woman because a woman who is more mean in nature is tends to be more masculine. She tends to be more rough and tough and she doesn't smile and she carries herself with that rough exterior. So when a woman carries herself in a masculine way, that takes away the job from the man to actually step in and protect her. And a feminine man absolutely loves that because he doesn't have to step in and protect her. He doesn't have to come to her defense if a man comes at her some kind of way. He knows she got it. That's my rough and tough little gangster, as they're saying. So a feminine man, yes, he wants his woman to be a lot more masculine because it takes away the job from him of protecting her. Feminine, uh, masculine women, they tend to say things like, no, bae, I got it, I got it. Even when they come up against men, I've seen firsthand of masculine women l feeling like they can go to blows with a man. And the man is just sitting there, you know, he's in the background ready to whatever, but she's the one in the forefront. But when you are a more feminine woman, you don't pretend as if you can win a fight against a man. You don't even put yourself in a situation where you're going to have to defend yourself against a man. And when situations do possibly arise where a man is coming at you the wrong way, the first thing that you will do is drop your head down to your phone and send that text message or make that call so that your hub's fiance or boyfriend can come meet you at whatever is happening. I've done that two times the entire time that my husband and I have been married. And that's only because these were work-related situations. And my husband, God bless him, he's not no thug, he ain't doing all that, but he will come to my defense and he's done that. And he talks, he uses his word, he uses his way, and things have been fine. I'm not saying you gotta have a man that's ready to come fight and all that stuff, but a more masculine man, he's not going to allow you to have battles and fight battles against other men, number one. So when you're dealing with a feminine man, he absolutely wants you to be masculine because he doesn't have to protect you. He doesn't have to worry about, you know, possibly having to get into an altercation over you because you, you a man, you got it. You a mean girl. Men, feminine men love that. So that's one reason why a feminine man will want you to stay in your masculine energy because he doesn't have to defend you. He doesn't have to say a word. He doesn't have to come anywhere. He know you got it because you're a mean girl, masculine he woman. So they love that type of energy. Number one, another reason why feminine men like to keep you in that type of masculine energy is because they are not forced to do the things that men are naturally expected to do. When you are in your masculine energy as a woman and you're dealing with a feminine man, they know that you don't mind working two and three jobs to take care of the bills, take care of the kids, pay for daycare, do different things while he worked part-time at Target or Walmart. A masculine woman has that kind of standard. When a woman is more na masculine in nature, she doesn't have a standard. Now, in actuality, when you are in your femininity in a relationship with a masculine man, more times than not, they're not really going to prefer you to work. But if you decide to work, they don't want you to work crazy hours. They don't want you to work all around the clock. They're going to remind you to rest. Even if you're a woman who's determined to run a business, go to work, do these different things, a more masculine man, 
He doesn't care if you become a millionaire in your profession. He's still going to go to work and do what he needs to do as a man. But a more feminine man, he wants to keep you in that masculine way of being. And if you are not connected to your femininity, you will see it as him saying you're a strong woman and he believes in you. You know, all that word mumbo jumbo they give you to make you feel all warm and fuzzy when you're a more masculine woman. But when you connect to your femininity, you start seeing that he's telling me that I'm strong. He's telling me, babe, you got it. You can do this as if that's some kind of encouragement. But actually, he's just putting more bricks on your back. And you don't really realize that until you get more connected to your femininity as a woman. So the first person who constantly wants to keep a woman in her masculine or in a masculine way of being is a feminine man. Number one. Number two, your employment. Have you ever been at your job and you were tired or you didn't come in or you called out or whatever and you explain to them the reason why I was just tired, especially, I mean, as a woman, I'm not saying everybody, I mean, as a woman, I was tired or, you know, I needed a mental health day. I was drained. Let me be completely honest with you. A lot of these corporations, they really don't see us as people. They see us as machines. That's for man and woman. But if you are a woman and I'm going to be completely honest and raw right now, especially if you are a black woman, it is as if you are not expected to be tired. They think of you as if you are never tired. You are there to give your complete all. Your first priority is to please the company and your personal life and everything else comes secondary. For many employers, they don't really give any thought to the fact that they might have Mothers, wives, sisters, aunts, caregivers in their employment, they just look at you as a machine. And with that being said, they expect that, okay, you said that you were tired, you called out, well, take this right up, and now I need you to pick up these boxes. And I understand that employment, you know, nobody forces you to be there, but I'm trying to show you that. That is the reason why when you get into employment, especially as a woman, you have to be selective on the type of employment that you're doing and you have to set the standard for what you will and will not do and the hours you will and will not do because they literally see you as machines. And if you are a woman, a relatively younger woman, a black woman, it's almost as if you don't need rest. I will tell you, I had a situation recently with a guest and I'm not going to give you all the details, but it was something we were working on the day previously and the next day came and it was a busy night and she was like, um, I said, oh, I apologize. I don't remember that. Um, you know, it was a lot, you know, she said, oh yeah, but you slept overnight, right? That's what she said to me, but you slept overnight, right? Meaning that was yesterday. Today's a brand new day. Why are you still tired today? Why are you still feeling frustrated today? That was yesterday. Today is another day. So when I tell you that a lot of people see us as machines, they see us as machines. And for the life of me, there are so many parts about what I do that I absolutely like. That's the only reason why I have not tipped out just yet. But I'm working on it. But I give you that real transparent moment because I want you to understand that that is the reason why you must go into these jobs and do your job, nothing more, nothing less, because they literally see you as a machine. Even your employers, they pretend to empathize with you. But at the end of the day, you are replaceable. And even if you pass, God forbid, they won't even mention your name no more. And I'm telling you this from real experience because there was an uncomfortable, unfortunate situation and name is no longer mentioned. And I'm going to leave it at that. So ladies, you must understand. And a part of that, the reason I gave you this story is that they see you as men. They see you as machines. These corporations really don't value you, value us.
And that's why we must always be connected to our femininity, our creativity, have a relationship with God so that we can create things that of our own that we can control. If you're going to be tired at the end of the day, it should be because you have done something productive for yourself to level up, to elevate, and to contribute to the wellness of yourself and your own family. And it affects you directly. It took me years to realize that, that employment is wonderful. Thank God for it. But there's a better way. And if you are a woman that is truly in her femininity, you get little epiphanies. Even if you're not all the way there yet, you get little epiphanies where you're like, yeah, I'm not going to be doing this much longer. There is a better way. I know there's a better way. I'm not going to deal with this. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. So your employer, number two, they want to keep you in that masculine, mechanic, robotic energy to where you don't know if you're coming or going. Okay, number two. And then number three. Your family of origin, if they were accustomed to you being the one that call her for money, call her to watch the kids, she know what's going on. Like you're the information system. You're, you're the Google. You're the YouTube. You're the social media platform. You are the information. They will come to you for everything. They will put the weight of their world on you if you have always operated in that masculine way of being. If you've always been the one that says, I got it, I'm gonna find out this information for you. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Don't worry about it, stop. Because that's how they keep you in that masculine way of being. Because normally what will happen, eventually, like I said in the second point, you'll get this epiphany and say, I'm tired. You figured out, you do it. And that's not saying that you don't want to be there to help your family. But when a woman is in the masculine way of being, she doesn't mind being used. She almost takes honor in saying how much she struggled and suffered and bared the weight of everybody else's mess. And it makes her feel good. But when you are a more feminine woman, you're like, no, 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 you're not going to do that to me. I, I will see what I can do. And leave it at that. Or if you just are able to do whatever you can do, you'll do it. But you don't feel obligated to suffer and struggle for other people. You're not God. And when you're in your femininity, your true divine nature as a woman, you no longer feel guilty for not being available to bear the burdens of every person who wants to give them to you. And trust me, I know this comes with time because I used to be that way. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. So we are to be in service to other people. We are to love other people. And I do that. But Jesus did not tell me that I got to let somebody cause me to have a stroke or to be stressed out or to have a mental breakdown over their mess. That Castro cares on the Lord. I am not the Lord. Okay. And when you realize that as a woman, you don't let religion, you don't let uh, people's foolishness, you don't let any of that cause you to feel guilty about saying, nope, that's your issue. I'm going to pray for you. I will see what I can do about that next week um, if, if you decide to help and leave it at that. So you're in a circle more than anything. If you have been the go to the masculine one, the man they can depend on, it's time for you to stop that. All right, because that's how they're going to keep you in that masculine way of being. You can't be feminine, flowy, carefree, stress-free, stress-less if you are constantly, your own personal life is okay, but now you got to worry about everybody else. You don't want to do that. So those were the three types of people, three groups of people that absolutely will keep you in your masculine that you don't have if you allow them to. All right? Like and subscribe to the channel and share this content. Hit the notification bell so that you're aware when I post a brand new video. If you watch this video until the very end, put the high hill emoji in the comment section. I absolutely love to see it. Take care.